Okay, how did you get the precise placement with the nodes in Fusion Page? I always have to micro adjust my nodes to get them straight. It is through this. So right click, go up to option, or go up to, sorry, arrange tools and to grid right there. And then they should be able to snap in place like that. I'd be Swifty, I'd be Shrimpy, I'd be Rashi Gal. There we go. Can I pull up desk pins real quick? Or do you think there's a better way? Actually, I could, I could, I could just import it in to DaVinci. I can Alt, not Alt X, Shift X. I did something wrong. Shift X. No. Um, scripts. Shift X, image clipboard. Oh, uh, uh, where'd it go? There we go. Yes, we did it. The secret tech. DaVinci tech. Yes, sir. So this is the, there's a script that allows you to screenshot anything on your computer. And then you hit like shift X and then it transfers your screenshot into its own bin into DaVinci. So you can grab it whenever you want. And it makes it your own bin in style. And yeah, it's so much nicer. Just want you little screen grabs and put it back into your um, program. I'm actually going to do a thing where I've just never done this before. I'm going to open the clips and we're on this clip right here. And I'm going to make a new fusion composition based on this composition. And so now we have like a different version of this one. So it's going to go with the old one if I want to. But now I have duplicated this. I've never done this before. See, like, it's like weird. And so if I just like get rid of it and make it look like it's a Polaroid, then I should think it should be fine. But... See, and that's like less distracting. How did you erase that? So there's a node called the paint node. And so what you can do with the paint node, so if you put it, I feel like an input on it, you can make shapes uh, with the paint. And so basically I just sampled the color that was there and I wrote over the part that I wanted it to do. And because it's anime, it's easy. Plus the phone they have is black. <laughs> I can't win. I can't win. How do you sample the color? So if you are, whatever input you are looking at, like here, like there's, um, I should probably put it like actual, actual photo so you would understand. So whatever this input is on the paint node, you can sample a color on this input. So if I want this green, I can just hold down alt and then click it. And then it'll give me that color green over there. And so I could, paint this out if I want but because I have it on this mode it only lasts for this frame so if I go to next frame it's gone and it's still here on this frame and so what you really want to do is when you add the paint node you want to go on the permanent paint setting and if you want it to be permanent and then you can paint here and then it'll be last for all those frames but it'll still be there so stuff like that uh, there's also like the clone tool which is you can basically it's a stamp uh no clone and so I can wherever this place is I could Make the, the source and then I can start painting and whatever is on that X is being painted over here. See how he's kind of like blending into the background now? And it's kind of looking a little bit more natural than compared to something else. So that's kind of what you what you do for that. Then now he's came up flash. Resolves late node layout looks so confusing. Well that's just the way I use the nodes. That's why it looks confusing. If I explain this to you, you'll be like, what? So basically I have two different scenes here. So this is a 3D scene with only these two main focuses because I didn't want them to be blurred. And so I put that into the merge with the camera that's moving, but I also use this camera on this 3D scene that's over here that has all the other background footage over here and it's being blurred with this defocus camera in the back. And so I put this one in the back so it can be blurred more. And then this one is a little bit has an animated blur and put that in the front, comp that together, merge it with a vignette and the media out on the end. What's the benefit of 3D scene for this? It looks dope. Look at that. And it gives that parallax effect. So you know, like when you're looking outside the car and things in front, in front of you are going super fast and things in the distance are moving really slow. That's the parallax effect. And so that's what you usually use 3D space for. Or how I use it anyway. How do you overlap keyframes like After Effects? So you use multiple nodes, basically. So. I, I'll use like a text here 
and then we have P and then we make this here and we want to see so want this to move here to here yeah, move like that we have like a nice nice animation like this bam nice little s curve but now we see we want to have this movement some different and then let you see over there look, look these keyframes let's start this at like eight and then move this to like the end over here and then we have this go like that same thing same deal like that and if you highlight these two you can see like these keyframes are overlapped and then now it gives you that nicer smoother movement this is a bad example but you know you get it you get the you get the concept okay what's the point i'll make the multiple timelines if you only edit one of them uh to house other footage on there so like i look i take footage from one timeline i copy it and i paste it on the other timeline so i have I could like look at all my footage on one timeline and then I'm going to edit all my stuff on another timeline. That's mainly what I use it for. 